Overthinking is different for everyone and it can be everything from what to wear to whether or not you should marry the person you're with. And for some people, it's a once in a while occurrence, while for others, it's more of a chronic state of being. And sometimes it might only occur during certain situations, such as social interactions, while other times it might affect multiple or perhaps even all areas of a person's life. And for me, it's differed depending on where I've been in life. When I felt stuck at an unfulfilling job, I would overthink the past, you know, going over the decisions that I had made that had led me to where I now was. I would ask myself if I should have studied something else at university. I would question how things would have been had I moved somewhere else or surrounded myself with a different group of people. And I would also overthink the future. You know, I would see images in my head of myself five or ten years down the line, still sitting on the same chair, and I would be terrified, you know, wondering if it was too late to change path, worrying about where I would end up, what will happen if I stay, what will happen if I leave, what if I leave and regret it, what if I stay and regret it. And it got to a point where those questions were present throughout the day, every day, and it went on for months. Now, many of those questions were valid questions, but what came apparent to me was that I wasn't what I call productively overthinking the situation, but rather I was what I call unproductively overthinking the situation. And that's an important yet often difficult distinction to make, and it's one that I'm still learning how to identify. Now, whenever I've gone through periods of overthinking in life, I've tried to find ways to stop it. Googling things like how do I stop overthinking and finding advice like let go of the past and learn to control your emotions, but it never worked for me. And not because the advice was necessarily bad, but rather because I think I had a difficult time buying into the whole stop doing this kind of mindset. I guess I don't really believe that you can just stop your thoughts, but rather that you can learn how to deal with them. So rather than just telling myself that I need to stop overthinking overall, I tell myself that I don't need to stop, but that instead I can learn how to distinguish between productive and unproductive overthinking. And of course, aim at focusing my attention on the former rather than the latter. Now, what do I mean by productive versus unproductive thinking? So productive thinking is thinking about something with the intention of finding something of value. You know, whether that's a solution, a new perspective, or an important lesson that needs to be learned. And not just with the intention, but also actively seeking for it. Unproductive overthinking, on the other hand, is going past that point, you know, it's where you go from a state of necessary reflection to a state of unnecessary dwelling. It's when you spend your time digging deeper and deeper into a hole that leads nowhere but back where you started, and so it can continue for who knows how long. Now, one of the reasons why distinguishing between the two can be difficult is because sometimes we tell ourselves that spending a lot of time thinking about something will assure that we go through every single possible scenario and every single possible outcome and therefore come to the best possible conclusion or solution or the truest answers when in reality it's not necessarily about how much time we spend thinking about something, but rather how we spend that time. Now, how does one go from unproductive to productive thoughts? For me, there's been mainly two things, being honest with myself and being accepting of those truths. There was this psychological research, I will link it below, that showed that one of the main causes of many psychological problems was the habit of emotional avoidance, yet it's something that we do all the time. 
when I felt like my job wasn't fulfilling, I didn't want to be honest about that with myself at first. So I tried to suppress my emotions and there can be a lot of reasons for why we're not honest with ourselves. You know, perhaps we're avoiding something, perhaps we're ashamed or regretful or fearful and nobody wants to feel those things. So we lie to ourselves because we're scared of what might come out of the truth and we would rather be comfortable even if we know that sooner or later the kettle is going to boil over and that we're gonna have to deal with the mess that it's going to cause. Honesty takes courage because it means that despite fear, you step out of your comfort zone and expose yourself to unexplored territory and that you're going to have to face a certain level of uncertainty that might come with that and it's taking some sort of action. As Eckhart Tolle wrote in his book, The Power of Now, any action is often better than no action, especially if you have been stuck in an unhappy situation for a long time. If it's a mistake, at least you learn something, in which case it's no longer a mistake. If you remain stuck, you learn nothing. Long story short, I eventually chose to be honest with myself and say that I don't feel fulfilled here and it threw me right into the loop of overthinking and I chose to try to deal with it the best way that I know how, which is through writing. So I would go over the thoughts one by one, trying to categorize them into helpful or not helpful. And I would start with the loudest ones and ask myself questions like, is this focusing on the problem or a solution? Does this have the potential of making my situation better or worse? And is this important? Now, the point of doing this is to work your way through the noise and to try to get rid of as much of it as you can. You know, noise being any thought that wastes your mental energy by putting you down or distracting you from what you should be focusing on, which is any thought that could bring any sort of clarity to your situation. Now, I cannot tell you exactly how to distinguish between productive and unproductive thoughts, partly because I myself struggle with that and partly because it depends on your situation and what it is that you're dealing with. But I think that as you start going over your thoughts, it'll become easier and easier to navigate. Now, perhaps you will end up realizing that out of all of those thoughts, there is only one that truly matters to you. Or perhaps you'll end up realizing that there is more than one. You know, whatever you end up realizing, it's a piece of information that you didn't have before. And hopefully you will make good use of it. Now, look, I still find myself getting lost in a whirlwind of thoughts that lead me nowhere. I still find myself overthinking the silliest of things, you know, I'm not a Zen master and I'm okay with that, you know, as long as it's not doing any damage to my mental health. Like, I'm terrible at picking what to eat at restaurants, you know, if there's more than 10 items on the menu, it's no longer going to be lunch because we will be there till dinner time. And if you can relate to that, one advice that I have is to check the menu before going to the restaurant. I almost always do that. Now, I would like to thank today's sponsor, which is Audible. Now, if there is one person who can describe some of the topics that I've covered in this video in the most incredible way, it's Eckhart Tolle. His audiobook, The Power of Now, is one that I keep going back to because every time I listen to it, I think of something differently and I learn something new and it's truly shifted my way of thinking. I highly recommend it. You know, I think it's incredible that we live in a time where consuming knowledge is so ridiculously easy. You know, the fact that you can have any audiobook you want available to you at all times in your phone or on any device and that you can listen to it before going to bed or while cooking or commuting, it's been a game changer for me. You know, whenever I feel 
uninspired or that I need motivation. I just pick up the Audible app and I have access to the world's largest selection of audiobooks and audio entertainment, including Audible originals, which are stories created exclusively for audio, including documentaries, exclusive audiobooks, and scripted shows that you can't hear anywhere else. And you can start listening with a 30-day trial. You can choose one audiobook and two Audible originals for absolutely free. And if you pick one that you don't like, you can exchange it at any time. And even if you were to cancel your membership, you still get to keep your listens in your library forever. To start your free trial, visit audible.com slash Lana Blakely or text Lana Blakely to 500 500. Now, as always, I would love to hear your thoughts on overthinking. And do we have any underthinkers in this community? Because apparently that's a thing and I'm really curious as to what that looks like. And also, please share any advice that you might have. I know that there are people who really struggle with overthinking every day and you're all pretty good at giving advice in the comments and it's highly appreciated so let's help each other out thank you for watching i will see you in the comment section